All these problems we're facing, it's not just ours. It's a global problem. We don't want our people to leave. We want them to stay here. And part of that is making sure this place stays here and doesn't disappear under the water. My grandparents' graves are here, and I want to have some means of connection with them. I don't want to just go away. Welcome to the Marshall Islands. I've come here because this country is disappearing. As the sea level continues to rise, the threat of ocean water inundating this land increases every single day. There's a little over 53,000 people who live here on the Marshall Islands, and right now, I'm in the capital city of Majora, where roughly half of the population lives. I'm going to meet a 20-year-old woman named Selena Lamb. So this is your house? Yes, that's my house. So this is where you've lived your whole life? Yeah. My maternal grandparents are right there. But I grew up with my grandparents. I didn't grow up with my parents. Okay. Yeah. They moved because of better opportunities for the for my younger siblings. These are my grandparents' graves. Where we are right now, your homeland, is going to be underwater. It is something that we all do not want to accept. And that's why all of us are still trying to push for people to do better, for countries to do better. And this is where I would sit at the very edge of this reef, and that's where I would wait for my merman. Your merman? What? <laughs> so when I come back, they're like, oh, Cecilia, have you found your merman? I'm like, no, he didn't come today. So where are we sitting right now? What is this? Uh, this is the seawall that um, was built a year or two years ago. The, the water basically rushes all the way. It's sometimes it even goes all the way to the main road. It's very scary. You realize even more how tiny your island is. I mean, I know science says that like these islands will disappear by this time, but still, this is our home. And if we lose it, then what else are we gonna have? <laughs> In one recent study, environmental scientists found that the Marshall Islands could be uninhabitable by the year 2030, which is just 12 years from now. My name is Kathy Jedungul Kachinar. I write poetry, I do poem videos, and I try to use my poetry and spoken word performances to raise awareness on different issues. Kathy has traveled the world advocating against climate change. Her mother has been the president of the Marshall Islands since 2016. It was incredible seeing at the G7 summit yeah, the conversation yeah. Yeah. that your mom had with Trudeau. I'm proud of the work that she's done and I'm proud of the way that she's representing our islands and the ways in which she's calling for certain issues to be, uh, to be seen, you know, and to be prioritized. And so I, I, I definitely appreciate that about her work. Yeah. The Marshall Islands is only two meters above sea level. We're completely vulnerable to the rising sea level. The issue of climate change is that pretty soon this island will become unlivable. You see a lot of headlines saying mm. the Marshall Islands are sinking. This is mm. the last generation of the Marshall Islands. Mm. Yeah, all oh, right, okay. That I can definitely say is really frustrating to read, for sure. We're nothing without our islands. We don't want to move. We shouldn't have to move. So a lot of what our government's position has been and my own position, my poetry, is just constantly Let's keep fighting and let's not give up just yet. After World War II, the U.S. Um, put the Marshall Islands as one of their trust territories. They tested over 60 nuclear weapons in the Marshall Islands. It was a level of complete trauma and destruction that has a lasting impact to today. The Runet Dome that's made up of, uh, I think, 46 nuclear weapons worth of debris. The rising sea level, once it, the Runet Dome goes under, all that poison goes out into the ocean. And it's going to affect everyone, not just the Marshalls. Back in 1986, the U.S. began offering a compact of free association, meaning Marshallese people can travel freely to and from the U.S. Many of them have decided to move there, some permanently. And it just so happens that there is one town in America that has seen the highest number of Marshallese immigrants. That place is Springdale, Arkansas. Now there are so many Marshallese people who move here to Springdale that there's actually a consulate's office here in town. And right now I'm going to meet with the Consul General Eldon Alec, who helps people adjust to their new life. How's it going? Please come on in. Nice to meet you. So sometimes, you know, I, I feel like I'm the voice of the Marshallese here. We are naturally shy people we don't talk like they'd go to get a driver's license and they would just turn them away and they come to me and say hey can you call and see why i'm being rejected and 
I do all of that, a lot of that. Why have so many Marshallese citizens moved to Springdale? Honestly, I think we moved to Springdale because uh, there's a lot of jobs here. And jobs here doesn't require a lot of schooling. You don't really need to uh, train. You just come here and you work right away. There are estimated 15,000 Marshallese that live in Springdale. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And I, there's probably more because I see new people coming here every week. So right now I'm heading inside the Blue Pacific Mart, which is one of the Marshallese owned stores here in Springdale. Is this place kind of where you can go to get some of the food that you would get on the Marshall Islands? So what do you miss about living on the Marshall Islands? Yeah, I miss, I miss my people. I miss the fresh water, fresh air. Each pin represents a town where Marshalls live in the state. Literally every, so every state, huh? Yeah, every state. We are in Springdale, right here. Springdale, Arkansas. Every single person I've met on this trip so far has said to me, you have to go to the beach at least once before you leave the Marshall Islands. So here I am. Okay, so this is definitely the most remote beach I've ever been to in my entire life. I'm literally the only person on the beach right now. And to think about something this unbelievably beautiful and not being here in a matter of years is unacceptable. The weather's been changed dr drastically. Yeah, it looks like it's calming down. Think so? Mm-hmm. Uh, look at this, by the way, look, look at all this flooding. As you can see, the rain has come down pretty hard today. And this is the main road. This is really the only thoroughfare that goes all the way down the Madro Atoll. So this is the College of the Marshall Islands. It's accredited under WAS. Students here actually do learn about climate change. And the college takes pride in allowing students to learn about it, ask questions about it. We've seen huge changes here because of climate change. Weather patterns have changed. We get different kinds of storms now. Whoa, come on, you guys. Every little kid on the island knows me. And, and they all know this cars. Half the country's population is under the age of 15 years. So we're going to train as many young people as we can uh, in first aid and teach them a little bit about uh, emergency response issues. We're working really hard to try to make sure people are ready when something happens. And hopefully it never does, but we want them to be ready in case it does. So right now we're heading to go meet a man named Allison Kalin, who has lived here in the Marshall Islands for his entire life. And he's also dedicated his life to building canoes. I, none of these things were built by professionals. <laughs> they were all built by, as, as part of the training program. This is our workshop and they do a lot of the small stuff. Why is it important to build canoes here in the Marshall Islands? Well, Marshallese people are ocean people. This is a 2,000 years old sustainable livelihood tool. What do you think you've given to the hundreds of young people that you've taught? Food on the table. No matter what you do in this world, it's always food on the table. It doesn't use fossil fuel. It's good for our country. The same water that gives us resources is the same water today that is coming closer and closer to our houses. If we have to move, we will be countryless. Now, if I move, drag me on my canoes out of this country. Nobody's saying right now, you got to plan to move, that's it. Until I hear somebody definitively say that, or until we as a collective decide, okay, we're going to have to do that, we're going to keep fighting. This is all about not giving up. You know, we call this uh, Jolet Janonis in Marshallese. It's like, it's your gift from God. We are today living in a global community. And all of these problems are all global community problems. We have to take care of Mother Nature as if she was our own.